Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here and welcome to Gnosis. Let's talk about another interesting person, Russell Targ. Everybody knows him from his uh, research at SRI Institute into remote viewing and particularly um, Ingo Swan, who he worked with, Pat Price and of course uh, Yuri Geller. He was also investigated uh, with the PK man, who he threw off uh, to have Jeffrey Mishlove research because they didn't want to be bothered. Um, but he got involved in this and where he comes from and how he did. But I mean, this is a guy, really, this is a guy is a government laser expert. He invented, uh, per he says, um, uh, basically the lasers that we're using today are all part of... Um, what he came up with and what his associate, Hal Putoff, came up with. So the lasers that we're using today has a lot to do with him and his uh, research. So he's quite an uh, advanced uh, physicist um, with a great interest uh, from childhood in parapsychology and theatrical um, magic, which he studied as a kid and uh, uh, played with. And who didn't as a kid? It's uh, quite exciting. Uh, Russell Targ was born in April 11, 1934. He's 85 years old now. So he recently, a couple of years ago, I think, or a year or so ago, had a horrible heart attack and almost died and barely survived. He now has a pacemaker in his heart. So um, he's another guy, as with uh, Putoff, who's 83, that um, uh, you know their time is limited. Now, it's very interesting, um, he, he was born in Chicago, um, his father was a book editor and was um, basically a publisher, and apparently um, uh, owned a bookstore, uh, a general bookstore by the way, uh, there's some allusions that he somehow owned a metaphysical or cult bookstore, but it's not, but of course, you know, back in the dem days, there probably was a large selection of many. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of books that have been published between the 1950s and 1990s and continue up to today in this whole area of, quote, metaphysics. I like to call it the occult sciences, which covers everything alternative. So, um... So, apparently, his father was big into this. He's a book editor. He was... Um, uh, connected within the industry of publishing somehow without going into boring details nobody cares about but apparently was able to get the ear of Putnam Publishing um, and uh, was able to get published um, uh, so it is gossiped uh, brought uh, got uh, Eric Von Donneken's Chariot of the Gods a huge huge seller and I don't know how connected he was to all that, but uh, he must have made, Daddy must have made a fortune from that. He also helped to bring uh, Lavasky's uh, Theological Society and, and her books to be published, so it is said. So, um, he has a BS in physics, and uh, he completed graduate work at uh, Columbia University, but apparently didn't get his uh, doctorate. But, um... He was involved in all the early laser research, which our entire world is ran by, and I don't think too many people understand that, uh, how everything that we use today of any credibility is laser-based, and all future technology will be laser-based, because it's the only way you can carry huge amounts of information is through photons, not through physical. So photonic energy, which runs quantum computers and everything else in the, fu in the future, will be all photon or laser based. And this is not, you know, laser guns like in bad movies. Um, he also, uh, so this is what he was involved in. So, and made... Um, major major breakthroughs and uh, he has stated that he basically invented what we consider the modern laser now 
um, <clears throat> in terms of its practical uses and other ones. Um, he uh, worked for uh, major research groups. Um, uh, again, they're basically government contractors, but they're called private Sylvania Electronics Company and everything else, where he's, um, um, uh, you know, this is their foundations, where they made a lot of money, got into the corporate world, and established themselves. Uh, eventually, he ended up uh, going to electronic and bioengineering laboratory at SRI, which was part of Sanford uh, uh, University at the time, I believe. Um, Hal Putoff was there, and this is where they got together because they had these similar interests. Now, it appeared, because Daddy was kind of metaphysical, published these books, they're open to that. He was, uh, uh, Russell was a... Uh, practicing child magician and kept doing that throughout his adult years to a degree just fun and there's always something fascinating about magic because you're doing things uh, while it is trickery it is uh, gives you this illusion of some sort of great empowerment so he did enjoy that and daddy was into that but certainly getting a degree in physics is not very metaphysical and he didn't go into publishing like daddy did. He didn't try to get books published on the subject matter. Now, how much in the background was being assisted here or what was going on, I have no idea. And, of course, it isn't overly discussed, and I'm not sure it even matters that much. But certainly that was not his career, and he hasn't taken any credit for publishing any books. Apparently, daddy did that, and daddy was probably active in that to the day he died, which probably wasn't that long ago. Uh, so he had this interest from his family, which he found interesting and questioned the reality of life. I think any smart person does that. Uh, the fact that they've been brainwashed and everything else uh, makes it even better to some degree. But then if you go into something that is all consciousness-based, like Scientology, like Hal Putoff did, well, then things become very interesting. Um, because they stress that even though you're a technical person they're stressing human consciousness so which is quite interesting um, we also need to um, understand that while this may have been some of their early stuff um, they did get heavily connected to governmental researchers while they were at SRI and that's a part of their life not all of their lives some people think um, that uh, this goes on forever. But the bottom line is Targ only worked for SRI until 1982. And then at 1986 to 1998, he worked for Opti uh, Electro Optics at uh, Lockheed Missile and Aerosmith, otherwise known as a government, again. So he worked for Lockheed um, for a pretty long period of time. What is that for? 12 years and um, after SRI, and he made excellent money, I'm assuming SRI had these government contracts, um, and then of course then moved over to uh, other places where I'm sure he was paid quite a bit of money. You gotta remember, this guy has a very technical background, and uh, that those years he worked uh, under CIA contracts, and I'm not sure how all that ties into other work, etc., but it seems to me he's not able to do that much working at Lockheed, unless it's another one of them quote, government jobs that he was given so he could do other work, which happens all the time. There's an awful lot of aerospace that people do absolutely nothing, and I've seen this personally. Um, you get hired as an engineer or something at these in a big corporation, and they go to there and they play the stock market all day. They read all. There's no work to be done because they've overhired as per the government demands. So... Um, this is uh, quite. So what is? He got involved in all this. He basically, he's, uh, he's worked for the government as their government whore, did all this stuff, worked with these psychic people. Very fascinating work, but what does it mean? It's all classified. There's nothing you can reveal. They're all under uh, contracts to shut up or be thrown in jail. And we just have to wonder. We also have to wonder if certain things weren't done to shut people up. Uh, Targ's daughter, Elizabeth, who is a highly um, trained... Um, scientist herself um, mysteriously died. Uh, she was studying people with a particular type of brain illness and their, and their illness, she was studying this and um, extremely oddly developed the same disease. Well, how weird is that and died from it? Was that a warning to Targ to shut up? Do we know? 
Of course, Targ uh, worked with Yuri Geller and Ingo Swan and proved them beyond a shadow of a doubt being the powerful people they were, but never really came out and stood up for them. He doesn't stand up for anybody. He doesn't stand up for anybody he worked with. Ingo Swan uh, left these organizations totally disillusioned because of the poor treatment he got and the fact that nothing's going to happen as long as you've got the, um, the government whore ring in your nose that they attach a leech to and really move you around for the rest of your life. So uh, they have formed uh, different organizations, him and uh, Keith Hare, um, as well as Anthony White, formed a company called Delphi Associates, selling psychic services that apparently didn't work. Um, I, well, I don't know if they didn't work, but the organizations went out. All of these go out of business. They haven't. This was something for them to try and make money with, and this was the interim before getting his other big job as he did this. Uh, but they didn't write courses. They didn't produce anything. They did produce a little electronic machine to help people develop. Uh, that didn't last very long. You can find those uh, in some places. I have located one personally, and we've been able to locate a few, but these are very, very rare and uh, certainly not something he's continuing to do. Um, so what exactly is that? He's, he's gotten this whole area open. Um, he's worked with a lot of top people in the areas and done nothing for them. He didn't go and stand behind uh, Yuri Geller. He couldn't because of secrecy to a certain degree to give him some credit, uh, but has never really come out and... Uh, went head to head against all of these uh, uneducated bozo freaks known as dumb bunkers you know clown college graduates people who haven't graduated even high school other people who are convicted felons so um, none of these people has he bothered to challenge with scientific fact or get into it now I think that's a requirement for someone like him to get out and support the people who've been ridiculed. I mean, Yuri Geller has been pushed into theatrical magic to make a living. Apparently, how pathetic is that? Um, so he hasn't helped much. Um, all of these people were uh, a lot of the people he worked with because um, Hal Putoff was a Scientologist. Were all Scientologists, and because they valued the mind, and while they were common type people meaning um, average types, they weren't scientific per se, um, found this uh, avenue to make money through uh, the Research Institute here, or how much they, but they weren't paid much at all. I don't think they take care of people. They give them room and board, all these things that they won't talk about uh, because of the fact that um, um, of the reality of... Um, how poor services they did. They're not taking care of people. They've left nothing. There are no institutes. There are no, uh, there are a few books, but there's no training courses. There's no follow-up. There's no uh, uh, fund set up to help people or to bring in the next level of parapsychologists. Um, it's pretty sad that none of this has been put together by these people, yet they think they're so dedicated. So, Well, they're dedicated to making a lot of money from it, but they're not helping the industry. And I have a real problem with that because generally they're just as bad as everybody else. What have they done? Nothing. It is interesting to note somewhat his daughter Elizabeth, as I mentioned, who died from a disease that she was researching. Um, and she died at the age of 41. Um after uh, attempts of um, to treat the cancer with radiation and surgery and apparently um, also with all the many healers and psychic energy. this is where all this stuff tends to um, lose credibility to a large degree why aren't they um, able to assist these things with all the remote viewers and everything else but she had studied the effect of prayer and other things on cancers and so forth and apparently um, and got a million and a half dollars to do this and of course because I'm sure she was uh, Russell's daughter of course she was very well trained and had her degrees and everything else but it's certainly nice to have that name behind you to do research in areas to find out well uh, how, um, what is the effect of prayer and other things on these particular illnesses? Um, and apparently, just like with 
Terence McKenna and other people who can't heal them themselves. Uh, of course, this is always the catch-22 of all this research, which seems to be very prevalent. Meaning when push comes to shove, um, your own technologies don't work that well. And uh, because you're so caught up in society uh, and doing what you're doing, you tend um, to fall back on what is easy. And especially when you're sick because you don't have any energy, uh, you fall back on going to your doctor and going through the primitive stuff, which is pretty much assured to kill you. So... Um, this is the entire problem with this area, and of course it's very tragic for a 41-year-old, uh, highly educated and interesting woman like this, uh, would uh, die from something that she was treating. Uh, uh, how ironic. And while I continue to study, it's difficult to get any kind of quality information on this. Pretty much what's online and, and what Sewerpedia gives you is very prejudiced, nasty accounts of anybody who's done anything differently. So other than the fact of, you know, when they were born, which I kind of assume is correct, are they getting birth dates right in cities and some basic educational backgrounds, uh, there's not much you can do from that. But I pieced together different things uh, on her, etc., and listened to even some, um, she was on different talk shows and uh, talked about her research and other things. Um, but that really has nothing to do with old Russell here, but uh, it does have to do with the fact of how weird this is uh, that can happen at such a young age of uh, 41 to, um, but you know, the bottom line is it's not really age that has anything to do with so many things. People are dying at all different ages. A huge percentage of children are sick, so to think that you have to be old to die is nonsense. We think we're living longer, we're not. The actual life expectancy in the United States has went down in the last five years, as it has in the UK. And I suspect in almost every other Western country, a life expectancy is going na down now. This is because of the fact that of the high degree of toxins and toxicities and poison products that we're now are in our system for the last 30 years. Uh, countries that are still living longer tend to be those that apparently may have some sort of, it's probably built into their culture, the Japanese and the Italians are living the longest with an average life expectancy of 86. Now, that's statistically. We're talking about. We're not talking about that person that lived to be 110 and this other thing. These are rarities which have been going on for a long time. So, your average life expectancy. Now in the United States, it used to be 78. I believe it's now about 76 of the average person. So, um, while there's a lot of people living into the early 90s now in a very feeble, feeble horrible way, it was never unusual for people to live in their mid-80s from the beginning of history and check any numbers when you hear about somebody. You know, Benjamin Franklin lived to be 84. His parents lived to be 82. So the point is, is what are you talking about here in terms of all this stuff? So living longer? Well, that's past life expectancy of today. So uh, we all need to understand that. So what has he done with all this? He is kind of vocal in his own way, but I'm not sure what he's doing. As he said, after all these years, all his money and all his Hollywood contacts, all he could get was some uh, junior uh, um, film school graduate to make... Um, his new Third Eye Spy film. Uh, a very unnotable person uh, who is very naive. I listened to an interview with him um, and kind of very young and doesn't ex uh, really understand much of anything, yet somehow is a producer um, of whatever. I don't know how he makes a living or not. Uh, you have to wonder about these things. Uh, so, But needless, that's the best you can do. There are no TV shows based on this. There are no cartoons based on this. Characters that use remote viewing or other things. Uh, none of this has been put into the media. Um, and he certainly has done nothing to propagate this. Uh, he has written, I don't know, seven, eight books, which I guess is okay at 86. I'm not sure if that's a lot or not. It seems to me he knows a lot more that he should be putting in books. Uh, that he should be releasing uh, information that he knows in many ways. None of this is happening. Um, so what has he achieved? I mean, with all the explosion of actual um, uh, TV productions and uh, massive amounts of even uh, satanic-type programs, uh, nothing from him, nothing from his buddy Hal Putoff, nothing 
nothing, nothing. There's no cohesive courses. There's no, um, apparently he had an ESP foundation for a period of time. Uh, but what's happened to all that information? What's happened to all those documents? We have no idea. Doesn't seem to be anything of value coming from it. So the whole idea is that um, he has achieved very, very little. Uh, the propagation of remote viewing, which uh, is certainly extremely interesting, but still has yet to be too credited, all done under military uh, corruption. Um, all the people involved in uh, remote viewing, I should say at least 90% of them are all military players or connected heavily to the military like he is. You know, he had to go through, uh, he's under a CIA governmental gag order where you can't talk about anything. And, but he's not coming out uh, to to confront debunkers, skeptics, etc. He's not backing up people like Yuri Geller and other ones to any great extent. Uh, none of this has happened. I look at his massive work and I say, well, Russell, you know, 10 years after you're gone, your, your works will go into obscurity. Nobody will really care. You haven't left anything. There are nothing of great value out there. You haven't set up people or an institution to carry on your work. Um, there's nothing out there, and neither has any of your other people. How put off hasn't done it either. Uh, neither has uh, Kare. And uh, can we go on and on? Swan didn't leave anything to anybody of value either. Um, we can go on and on with all the people out there, but it doesn't seem to be any of this information up to my knowledge. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but it doesn't matter if they leave it to some institute, some place where it's hidden in some library. Um, there's nothing out there public, and he doesn't seem to be spending on any money to get things up on websites and put all this information that he may have, further research, more documentation. None of this is being done. So what have you really done here? You couldn't strike a Hollywood deal with Steven Spielberg? You can't get his ear? You can't get any of the other people's ears? How about George Cleaning? No. Well, what about all these people? The British goofball reporter, uh, Ronson, I forget his name, who wrote uh, The Men Who Talked to Goats, or killed go I forget what the exact title got into a big movie which starred Jeff Bridges and uh, George Clooney he was able to get a deal and it got produced well where is your movies you can't get anybody's ear except this kitty well, that's sad in itself isn't it well maybe that's because you haven't been out in the public maybe because you're not out there uh, confronting uh, Penn Jillette, that goofy uh, mental case, uh, as it appears, uh, that didn't even think that uh, it was bad to eat boxes and boxes of Krispy Kremes, wondered why he was 320 pounds and dying. And he's an expert because he went to clown college. Well, you're not confronting him. You're not confronting any of these other people. You don't have an institute to train people and then go into public and say, hey, look, these people can do that. Let's show it to you right here. Well, nothing has been done. No training courses, no products are left. His, his machine that he built uh, with Keith uh, Haray or Haraday or whatever his name is, um, is now a little app on uh, your phone. I don't think that's very good either. Where are other training tools? None of this seems to be out there. Uh, so the whole idea is that w what is going on here, and it doesn't seem like that entire field of remote viewing, while some claim that is so great, other ones uh, have not been able to do much with it, period. But that's just remote viewing. I mean, these are many other areas to it that you, as a leader in this field, you have been criticized so much, uh, have basically come up with nothing. Of course, you've left some books, and of course, some of those books do have practical information in them, uh, but uh, I can't say that much has been done there. I mean, they certainly haven't gone out and done what the capacity that you could have, and apparently um, uh, you and Hal have made quite a living off of all of this. I would have to say that I guesstimate uh, that you are pretty wealthy. You have a lot of money, and you've done nothing with it. You've uh, made a lot of money from your books and other things. Uh, you've perpetrated this because after all, you're going to write a book on what laser research and it's going to be a maybe a hundred seller. <laughs> so the fact that you've sold probably millions of your 
books on psychic speculation and uh, consciousness in general certainly is a good thing to write about. These are public, these are subjects that are very popular and are available out there. Certainly not laser research or zero energy propulsion is going to do anything for you. Certainly not going to make you any money. So you've done quite well in this industry, and as all the other parapsychologists, from my knowledge, I don't know any of them achieving anything. They've lived in academia, been supported by these big professor salaries, have done some private consulting, and all of it seems to pay quite well. Well, you've left the public with nothing. Some people have written books. Your books do have some practical information in it, but I don't think it's anywhere near enough, and I don't think it's structured, and why isn't there the... Uh, Russell Targ Institute of Consciousness Studies, which trains people in all these areas. Well, you've left that to all the other, or were you forced to give that to all the other government remote viewers so they can get their paychecks? Because you should have been the primary one. You're the guy who did the research. Uh, also, Russell Targ claims to have uh, written the entire remote viewing protocols. Now, Ingo Swan takes credit. Um, for this and other people, and there's even people on the West Coast who are involved in this, uh, parapsychologists, uh, who also uh, say they did it. So I'm sure it was a combined effort, but the uh, needless to say, the people with the biggest um, uh, well-known is SRI, and that is Russell Targ, and uh, there needs to be a lot more left out there, and why you don't have institutions going, and why you don't have psychic organizations out there working in terms of these consulting firms that have co come and gone all the time. Every single one of them has failed, including uh, Ed Dames's great uh, remote viewing. Every single one of these organizations has failed. They are not running today. Uh, in any way. Now, whether there's private research being on, who knows? That doesn't do anybody any good as far as I'm concerned. So there isn't anything out there except a modicum of written information with really no. As you said, they'll be on the bookshelves for hundreds of years, and every year there'll be less interest as other people pick up and as we go over the same old things again. All the things we're talking about today were all talked about 30, 40 years ago. Uh, by a lot of very professional people who wrote a lot of good books detailing their processes and their successes, and nobody's ever heard of them. And it certainly isn't going to change now. Well, everyone, remember there is no reality until the manifesting scientist creates it. Until next time.